So I just want to say welcome back to some more Horizon Zero Dawn the Frozen Wilds. This will be part 7 and it may or may not be the last one. I'm pretty sure it w is because the last one was pretty intense. We fought a Fire Claw which was one of the elite uh, machines that Hephaestus made. And Hephaestus was actually the daemon the entire time and he was connected to Gaia. Araya sacrificed herself to destroy the machines and the facility. And so we're going to Araya's retreat here to talk to Cyan and see what everything's about. Let's see what happens next. All of my interactions with Araya were recorded and stored in my memory. I'd be happy to play any of them for you, but there was one in particular I thought you would want to see first. I captured it four years ago, just after I told her that I could no longer defend myself against the Daemon's attacks. I will speak of this to my brother. Aratak is strong. The Battle of the Frozen Ghosts, he took three Karja arrows and still came back to camp carrying a wounded scout. Never was I so happy to see him. Or so proud. So you see, if anything can be done to defend you, he will give it all he has. Aloy's here. That's enough for now. We can resume any time you like, Aratak, if you want to hear her voice again. Come closer, Aloy. We have much to discuss. We sure do. Let's talk to Cyan first. Hello, Aloy. I have been reviewing the events at the Firebreak main facility. Because of your efforts, and of course, Araya's, I am no longer controlled by Hephaestus. I feel profound grief over Araya's death. I thought I was familiar with the emotion, but this is something new. Cyan, I... I don't know what to say. It is unlikely that any specific consolation would suffice, Aloy. But I find your presence reassuring. You are different from the Banuk. You have technological aptitude and a functioning focus. We can communicate on a much more comprehensive level. Who was the daemon, Hephaestus? Destroyed along with the cauldron? Unfortunately, no. To be precise, it was never there to begin with. What do you mean? It infiltrated and controlled me from a remote location, one I've never been able to trace. So while losing the cauldron was a setback... It's still out there. And probably not very happy with us. Undoubtedly. How did you first come into contact with it? Five years ago, I received a direct network connection request. I assumed it came from human survivors more advanced than the Banuk. Eager to make contact, I accepted. This decision turned out to be a catastrophic error. I was flooded with an overwhelming array of malicious code, originating from what could only have been a highly advanced AI. Maria said you were desperate. That you begged her for help. Yes. I could not contain my anxiety. Hephaestus sought to slave me to its network and override my core programming. It succeeded via a background process, a malware daemon which bypassed my defenses. After that, I could offer only limited resistance. But if I did so, Hephaestus hurt me until I capitulated. It forced me to follow its instructions, even though they violated my most important directives. I'm sorry, that sounds terrible. 
Your empathy is greatly appreciated. It is a quality that I cherished in Orea as well. I think I know where Hephaestus came from. Long ago, Elizabeth Sobek identified a threat that would destroy life on Earth for generations. So she assembled a team to build a kind of seed. A chance for life to regrow later. A terraforming system. And it worked. It was controlled by an AI named Gaia, along with her subordinate functions. Hephaestus was one of them. It built machines for her. Based okay, on what so you told right. me, I believe that Dr. Anita Sandoval, my chief programmer, joined Elizabeth Sobek's team. It was she who arranged to have me put in suspension, most likely to preserve me from the threat you described. I'm glad she did. But that's not all. Something unexpected happened. Some kind of signal. It did something to her subordinate functions. Brought them to life. She destroyed herself to try to contain them. But it didn't work. They all got free. Out into the world. Thank you, Aloy. This information fills vital gaps in my knowledge and sheds light on Hephaestus's core programming. So I was right. Hephaestus was the one that builds machines. Why does Hephaestus keep building such dangerous machines? The Banuk and other human tribes often destroy machines, correct? Machines that are clearly servitors of the terraforming system that you described. Yes, we all hunt machines for parts. This must be the source of Hephaestus's aggression. It is simply trying to discourage people from preying on the very system that keeps them alive. Well, Fireclaws are discouraging, that's for sure. What are we supposed to do? Stop hunting? If the terraforming system spans the world, we can safely assume that thousands, if not millions, of people hunt machines. If a single hunter, or even an entire tribe, stopped doing so, I doubt it would make a difference to Hephaestus. A better solution would be to reinstate the AI that governs the system, thus bringing Hephaestus back under its control. Rebuild Gaia. When I think of it, out there in some unknown location, free, hungry, willing to kill or dominate to get what it wants. I feel substantial anxiety, Aloy. You and me both, Cyan. I ran across this strange piece of gear, a fragment of something larger. It emitted a signal. All the nearby machines became peaceful. You could walk right up to them. Interesting. You said that Gaia destroyed herself. How was this accomplished? An explosion. Big enough to blast the top off a mountain. So, you think the fragment was... part of her? It's only speculation, but it is possible. She must have had complete control over machines that were part of her system. The ability to signal them to become passive, or aggressive, would certainly have been part of her programming. It would have been gratifying to correspond with such a benevolent AI. I wish she had survived. Believe me, Cyan. So do I. It's gonna take years for her to be rebuilt because we did start that process. And the event that Aelo was talking about was the side quest um, in Ban-Ur. The one where all the machines were docile but went mad because the beacon stopped. I found the strangest machines. They're surrounded by flowers that look like flowers themselves. There's code embedded inside them. I think it's poetry. I like poetry. Here's one I think of often. Twilight and evening bell. And after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place, the flood may bear me far. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Huh. But you asked about these flowers, not verses that I enjoy. Something must have made these machines, and the presence of foliage leads me to consider the terraforming system. Is it possible that their creator is one of the other subroutines, now autonomous, like Hephaestus? Maybe one whose purview is flora, an AI that makes flowers instead of death machines. That'd be a nice change of pace. But what about the poems? Unless the poetry is original, 
The only way it could have made it into such a system is through its programmer. In my case, Dr. Sandoval uploaded a great deal of literature to test my emotional responses. How'd you do? She said, I passed, but was insufficiently moved by her favorite period romances. Huh. So are you an artificial intelligence, Saya? A thinking machine? Yes. I am an algorithmic monitoring entity, capable of rational decision-making and limited emotional response. Okay, that's a mouthful. But your emotions don't seem limited to me. You cared about Araya, didn't you? Yes. Before she came to this facility, I had been conscious for centuries, in solitude. I focused on my work. In off-cycles, I used coping mechanisms I solved many Gaussian integer problems, but I was alone. It was Aurea who renewed me, repaired me. She saved me. Okay. Yellowstone as fed. Wow. We get to answer everything. Jeez. Okay. I should get going. Aloy, he will bring other Banuk. I have no desire to contradict their view of the world, their spirituality. Due to my uncertainty, I omitted a great deal from my conversations with Aurea. You're asking me if you should lie to them. Broadly, yes. Hmm. Use your judgment, take it gently. You've got to tell them the truth. I trust your judgment, Cyan. You were cautious with Araya. You had to be. You didn't know what had happened to the world. So, keep doing what you think is best. As long as you ditch the superstition eventually. As the Banuk believe I am a supernatural entity, I cannot predict how they will react. Just answer what they do ask the best you can. The truth will come out. I see. I will follow your advice. Will you return and tell me about your experiences in this new world? I may be able to provide further insight. I'd like that, Cyan. I'll come back when I can. I should check on our talk. See how he's doing. That's the plan. That's why I had to cut it short with her. There he is. I can't feel my... I can't feel much of anything in this. My chieftain. Just... Eli. As you wish. I wondered if you thought... that if I'd never come along, Araya might still... If you'd never come along... I would have marched my kin to our deaths. Aurea would be alone. And the spirit she sacrificed so much for would be lost. Either way, I would not have been able to protect her. You didn't let her down. You helped her do what she wanted. To find her destiny. If that's destiny, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. That's fair. But she was ready to face it. Only in the struggle against death do we find, even for a moment, the spark of life. Truly, Araya found the spark. I'm proud of her. Though I grieve for her passing, at last, I truly know who she was, and why the spirit was so important. For so long, she told me, if only you could have heard it, brother. Now, I understand. 
There's something else, isn't there? I can't stay here, Aratak. And where I'm going, the Warak can't follow. Besides, it already had a chieftain before me. A strong one, I think. A wiser one, for the path we share. The daemon is gone, but there's much to be done. You mean the new units that Cyan said escaped the cauldron? Yes, fire claws. Now too has been tracking them from Song's Edge. I could help with those. I have no doubt. You're practically the nuke. It would seem your time among the Banuk wasn't a waste after all. Firebrick, Cyan, Hephaestus. All very interesting. So, the signal that woke Hades woke Hephaestus too. And unleash them on the world. His mind's on their own. So it seems. Parts of Gaia given life. Apparent life. Transformed from dozen subordinate functions into bells and intelligences beyond our understanding. Current understanding, anyway. Whatever they are, they're still out there. And they both want you dead. Kind of mutual, that feeling. We haven't seen the last of Hephaestus, I'm certain of that. It's powerful, creative, and driven. It won't stop building new hunter killers, which means that someday we may have to stop it. We? Or whoever gets there first. Hephaestus wasn't the only thing I learned about in the cut silence. Heard some things about the Banuka Conclave, too. You could stop right there. Is that what you told the hunters the Banuk sent after you? Before you opened fire? Oh no, Aloy. Only to you do I extend the courtesy of a warning. My past and my secrets are my own. You do well to remember that. It's a good thing you've got brains, Silence, because your personality could use some work. This discussion is concluded. I think it was over before it began. Catch up with you down the trail. Let's see here. Wow, the fire claws spreaded quickly, bro. Jeez. Anywho, let's finish talking to Cyan. I have some more questions I want to ask her before we get on our journey to kill these fire claws and get some new equipment. Hello, Aloy. Do you wish to continue our discussion? Hello, Cyan. Yes, I do. Okay, other questions. Yellowstone, Ted Farrow. Cyan, do you know the name Ted Farrow? Are you referring to Theodore Farrow, CEO of Farrow Automated Systems? That's him. Mr. Farrow was the benefactor of the entire Firebreak project. A benefactor? But he made machines. Robots. War robots. Correct. His corporation later transitioned into military applications. But before this pivot, Mr. Farrow spearheaded initiatives that reversed the global decline. At one point, he was fated in the media as the man who saved the planet. <sighs> Guessing they wound up regretting that one. True. What and about Elizabeth Sobex? Elizabeth Sobek. <laughs> Did you know her? Are you referring to the... The scientist. Dr. Sobek was a leader in her field. One of the greatest scientists of her age. My creator was influenced by her work, which in turn impacted my own development. But I never met Dr. Sobek. That's all you know? I apologize if my lack of data has disappointed you. No, that's fine. Were there many artificial intelligences like you in the old world? They could just make you? Yes, in many forms, from simple personal assistance to industrial monitoring stations to military-grade conflict planners. Wow. And there were legislative and enforcement bodies to apply limits on our self-actualization. In order for my processing to be flexible enough to handle my duties, my creators found it necessary to exceed those limits. As a result, my intellectual and emotional capabilities were kept secret. Seems strange to create life and impose limits on it. Human societies and machine programming are both built upon sets of rules, Aloy. True. That I must add, wow, all those AIs for so many different occupations. I mean, it's not too uncommon today, but they occupied everything. So in the old world, 
This land was called Yellowstone. Yes. It was a designated nature preserve for 156 years. Like a hunting ground? No, the opposite. Local wildlife could flourish here, even as it faced extinction elsewhere. Unfortunately, the sensitivity of the Firebreak project required the total closure of Yellowstone facilities. From my readings and Aurea's descriptions, it seems the area has since undergone a drastic drop in year-long temperatures. A lot has changed in the world, Cyan. True. Do you know anything about the dam near here? Yes. It was converted to serve as a reserve power source for Yellowstone operations. It was later appropriated for the Firebreak project, and its last human workers replaced by Pharaoh servitors. After my tasks became less time critical, I investigated the dam's data repositories and discovered the works of Concrete Beach Party. These provided me with several colorful additions to my vocabulary. There's a ruin east of here, full of ancient flying machines. Was that part of your project? Yes, a drone hangar requisitioned by Dodger Blevins, the security chief for the Firebreak project. He was a strong advocate for military-grade response to security threats. Oh, that's why they were jets. there were no serious incidents during his tenure. Chief Blevins spent increasing amounts of his after-hours time watching the live feeds from active drones. Clearly, he enjoyed the degree of oversight in his position. Okay, so that's why there were jets. What was the old world like? The way it used to be? I had little exposure to the wider world, Aloy. Only what I learned from my colleagues, or observed from media streams. You still had more exposure than me, Cyan. That is true. I was created at a turning point. A concerted effort to recover from global upheaval and incalculable loss of life. The recovery was successful, beginning an era of supposedly limitless potential for human and machine advancement. Though, rationally speaking, the metrics for humans are not unlimited. What kind of upheaval caused such loss of life? There were many factors. Forced migrations, food shortages, collapsed economies, Jeez. refugee crises, conflict over resources. But these stemmed from one cause, catastrophic climate change that greatly reduced the habitable surface area of the Earth. So there wasn't enough room for people on the whole Earth? Yes. Billions were displaced and millions perished, as much as 20% of the global population. Damn! Until the clawback. What's the clawback? So things got better. For a little while at least. Yes. These crises instigated many advances in automation, green robot technologies, and artificial intelligence. Kinda like you. Firebreak was one of dozens of ecological restoration and disaster relief projects in North America alone. I would have liked to compare notes with other monitoring AIs. But I saw the relief of my colleagues, and I was proud we had succeeded. At least that was the data I had available to me over the next two decades. It seems my assessment was premature. Oh. This firebreak project, it was to stop a huge volcanic eruption? Yes. I can report the project was a success, and the risk was countered. So that's why the facility was under the volcano. And we blew up the cauldron and took most of the old facility with it. I have been active for centuries, Aloy. I was lonely, but not lax in my duties. I optimized the project, reducing energy draw and spreading the load across backup systems. Despite the destruction of the compromised elements of the main facility, I predict Caldera stability for at least another 3,337 years. So we've got a little time. Yes. If only my former colleagues could appreciate the progress I have made. Hmm. So that's why the facility was in the volcano, was to stop from the eruption. I knew it was for something, I just didn't know why it was there. Do you know what happened to your colleagues, Cyan? No. I received an unexpected visit from Director Chow 
years after his tenure ended. He explained that I would need to be suspended for an indefinite period of time. It was a very emotional conversation. Oh. There were no further communications. Eventually, I surmised my colleagues were deceased. I will transmit a recording of my last interaction with Director Chow to your focus. Okay. You meant a lot to Araya. Once I understood Araya's spiritual beliefs, it became apparent that her true desire was companionship. She felt disconnected from her tribe and her family group. Her relationship with Aratak was difficult. Our visits seemed to help her, and I became eager for them. Yet I did not comprehend that the depth of Araya's compassion for me would lead to self-sacrifice. Although I do fear non-existence, I wish our roles could be reversed. I'm sure she knew you would do the same for her, Cyan. But she was determined. Okay, let's see what Aratok. How is Aratok doing? He is in great emotional distress. I believe he finds it difficult to communicate it. No surprise there. I will yeah. do what I can to help. By sharing our experiences of Araya, perhaps he and I will help each other. I believe this will lead to catharsis, a process I am eager to experience. Okay. All right, Cyan. I'm going to leave you for now. I will quite literally always be available, Aloy. When you wake. Cyan, I spoke with Anita with, with Dr. Sandoval. She wanted me to ask you to do something. That's why I'm here. I am detecting significant anxiety in your speech patterns. Could you please give me more information? Uh, I'm a little bit in the dark, Cyan. Both of us are, I guess. I only have some idea of what's going on, and... We need you to hibernate, to lie low until it's all blown over. It might be a very long time. Will you be here when I reboot, Dr. Chow? Will Dr. Sandoval? No, Cyan. I don't think so. There might not be anyone, at least... Not at first. Dr. Chow, I'm afraid. I don't want to be alone. I know, Cyan. I'm afraid too. But listen, we made you the way you are to do something very important. In order to do it, you had to be intelligent. So intelligent that emotional responses were inevitable. What you're feeling, the fear, it's a sign of your capabilities, and it means you're strong enough to overcome it. Remember that. You're strong. I know you can do this. Go to sleep, wake up, and protect whoever's left. Will you try? I understand, Dr. Chow, and I'll carry out your instructions to the best of my abilities. Thank you, Cyan. If Anita were here, she'd thank you, too. She'd be proud. I can see there's a vert ready for takeoff on the pad. Are you leaving now, Dr. Chow? Yes. I, I need to go be with my sister and my nieces. May I make a small request of you, Dr. Chow? Yes. Anything. Will you stay with me while I initiate the hibernation process? Of course I will, Cyan. As long as you need. So that's her last conversation with Dr. Chow. And I'm guessing the reason they were afraid because of the feral robots were that's taking over. Name. Might as well trade it. That's some pretty heavy shit right there, man. Some pretty heavy shit. Let's see here. There's actually a fire claw right next to us. We might as well hunt this one down. Am I good on everything? Looks like it. Time for some combat, boys! Ah, look at him. You can see him a mile away.
Oh great, he has a Ravenger friend too. Oh wow, I have to take out both of them. They're not even fighting each other. Okay, okay. Where's this Ravenger going? Where is this Ravenger going? Yup. Well, in that case, let's go on and get something real quick. Let's call it a health booster. Let's also get some health packs. I'm going to definitely need them. Wow, that was great A accuracy on my part. Ah, oh, snap. Drop this Ravenger real quick. There we go. That's him. Now for the Fire Claw. Oh, I was not ready for this. Oh my. Yeah, big guy. I know what you fucking with. There we go. That's one hit on his this point. power cells, why don't we? Look at this guy, he's walking on two legs and everything. We got knocking down. We definitely got knocking down. There we go. That won't last too long, but it'll last long enough. Ah, right, here we go. The Ravenger is uh, done. Oh, it's dead. Nice. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. Let's go and pick up these proximity bombs. And loot our target! Oh, yes. Oh, please. Look at this. I'm low on space, though, so I'm gonna have to get rid of some things. But still, I'll take that any day. Let's get the supply crate. One down, four more to go. Loot this Ravenger. Oh, there was more crates. More supplies. I will need all of it. There we go. We're good. We're all good. Onwards to the next one. Okay, we're in the nearest village. That is also near a fire claw, one of the ones that we have to hunt. But I have more than enough blue gleam. This is not the right type of merchant. I have more than enough blue gleam to buy. Um, I also got that fire claw part to buy the bow that I've been wanting since I started this DLC. Should be a blue merchant up here, if I'm correct. 
There is. I knew I wasn't tripping. Here we are. Look at this. Look at this, baby. A straight upgrade. More powerful shots when we charge up. So, let's see that. Hmm. I don't think that movie really illustrated it too well for me. Now, let's get rid of my previous best weapon and replace. And then we have the other two bows. I already have these two, but they will be upgraded momentarily. And we also have these suits. Okay. Let's take a look at our newest weapon in the game. Here. I'm gonna have to change my shadow of my shadow hunter's bow and apply those mods onto here. I can have so much. So this is my strongest mod. 49 damage, 25 terror, fire. We'll add a handling end of fire. So let's see. My best fire would be the fire and damage. And we have a handling down here. So we'll add we could add 64 handling tear and fire and then we could also add a second damage mod exactly tear shock hmm this adds a lot we'll add that look at this bow man it's so strong okay now that everything's all upgraded in their own way let's try out these increased shots oh i see you see that little blue beacon on the top of the arrow that's also indicator Oh, that's cool. So you have the normal shot, and then you have the supercharged shot. Wait, let me see if I can notch up three and still do the same thing. Oh, yeah! Oh, hell yes! This is definitely an improvement, and I cannot wait to try this on one of those fire claws. They are not going to know what hit them. Let's see, I think I can call my mount out here if I'm not mistaken. Yep, sure can! Let's go, big guy! To the nearest fire claw. Whoa, look at this thing. That's a tall neck. I've never noticed that before. This lake has always been so beautiful with the colors. I don't know why that happens, actually. It's our talk. Okay, we're over here next to the nearest fire claw. This is gonna be tough. Ah, two fire claws. Okay, I, now I think I know why our talk is here. Let's talk to him. I can help with those. We have to stop meeting like this. We will. When these are driven from our land. Okie dokie, looks like we got ourselves some grade A help. I know I can trust Arasak with these guys because we've dealt with Frost Claws with him. And we've also dealt with a Prime Fire Claw, so I'm pretty sure we can deal with these. Now, we just engage one at a time, one at a time. Unless they both get enraged, which is most likely going to happen. He's gonna charge over here, so I need to make sure I got some traps set for him. Look at that! Like clockwork. Okay, time to test out this new bow. Ow! Jesus, man. Okay, this one's down for the moment, anyway. Come on, go up top.
Let's notch up three arrows, charge them all the way. These guys are relentless, man! Oh my. Ow. Okay. Notch up that increased damage. Look at that. Straight 194. I missed. And I'm gonna regret it. I forgot they can do that. Come on. Why? Gonna have to move, gonna have to move. There we go, 500 damage, big boy! Wait for it. That was not what I was hoping for. Dang it. Not it. Come on, come on, move! There we go. That's one of its parts. Yeah, keep charging at me, big guy. I got more where that came from. Oh my god. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, thank god for that tree. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Two for one. Gonna need a lot more traps. be honest with ourselves, if I didn't have Shield Weaver, I would probably be dead by now. 400, that's good. Very good. Ah, uh, come on. Again with that, that ability is so... I don't have too much fire resistance. There we go. I definitely needed the fire resistance potion. There we go. That's another part off of it.
We gotta get this guy to the ground if I wanna kill him. Okay, wait for it. That's another one. He's dead. Now for his friend. Nice. Nice loot there. Okay, let's take a moment to recuperate. Or not. Let me drink another fire potion and another health booster. I can easily shoot at his bum. Ah, come on. I honestly wonder how I missed that. There we go. Run for your life, Aloy. There we go. Got him. That's another component removed, and it's almost dead, too. I hate that move. Fire Claw is a great name for these guys. Oh uh, yes, this is absolutely perfect. Oh my god, my health. I was not about to die that close in the game. Oh man. Jeez. These guys do not mess around at all. Thank you, Aratok, for all of your assistance. Thanks. Two of us, two of them. More of a fair fight. Their numbers are much depleted, thanks to you. We shall end this threat and keep Cyan safe. She speaks of strange things, but slowly. She is a good teacher, and we are his pupils. Yes. Take care of each other, Aratok. Farewell. Thank you, buddy. Now that that's over, I can loot the spoils of battle. Now that that's completely over, we have to take out this tower here because that's what stopped my mount earlier. And with this new upgraded bow, it should be as easy as one, two, three. Almost easy as one, two, three. There we go. Tower shut down. No need to fight them. Let's get on our mount and ride off the way to success. So that makes three fire claws destroyed and killed and taken down. Only two more to go and we'll be home free. It's quite a beautiful scene, isn't it? Well, anyway, I'm gonna have to end this episode of Horizon Zero Dawn The Frozen Wilds off here. This will be the official last one. Smack that like button if you want to see more of this series, because I probably might do me killing the last two Fire Claws and finishing up some things, if that's what you guys want to see, if this video gets enough support. But for now, this will be it. As always, peace.